Kanye, we were rooting for you. We truly were. But after this interview, I can't defend you anymore, man. I can't. I'm about to cover what's been going on with Kanye regarding Christianity. It's not looking good. But before I start with that, let's get into the intro. What's going on, guys? It's Big Nick back for another video. Thank you guys so much for coming back to the channel today. Before we get into today's video, if you guys like Christian content, please give this video a like. Subscribe to my channel down below if you are new. And turn on my post notifications so you never miss a new video. Without further ado... Let's get into it. Kanye West just came out claiming that he has beef with Jesus Christ, as well as publicly denouncing his Christian faith. In a recent interview with Big Boy TV, he finally breaks his silence on his real feelings towards Christianity after many fans were already speculating that due to his erratic behavior, he kind of already fell away from the faith without publicly saying it. But now he did publicly finally admit it. Just a couple years ago, it seemed like Kanye was really on fire for God, being very public about his Christian faith, as well as releasing an album called Jesus is King. He was even so serious about his Christian music that at one point he didn't allow his music producers to be in fornication while they were producing beats for his Christian album. However, a visible decline was noticed when he was in this scandal about a year ago, which ultimately led him to be dropped by multiple different companies that he was working with for his remarks about a certain ethnic group controlling the financial systems of this world, with even his own Chase bank account being shut down after making these remarks. What's funny about that is that this specific ethnic group that he named, which you guys may remember, where he said that they controlled the banking system ended up shutting down his bank right after so they did really prove him wrong but Anyways, that's a rabbit hole for a different day. However, after he challenged the specific mafia, his life started spiraling out of control as a result of their retaliation on his livelihood by threatening his finances and his children. And then he started acting really bizarre by even saying that he loves Hitler on Alex Jones' podcast. And it was so awkward that Alex Jones, who's known for being overtly out there for being super animated and controversial, even had to tell Kanye, hold on, chill, let's not start talking about how we love Hitler. If Alex Jones is telling you you to chill out then that's probably a telltale sign that you should chill out. <laughs> it seems like after this podcast, this was the tipping point in his life where I could start to notice a visible decline from the Christian faith. And this is where the pressure of the enemy's agents was really starting to close in on him. And because he had no real accountability from other spiritual leaders in the church, this was the perfect opportunity for the devil to isolate him and eventually cause him to denounce Christianity, which ended up happening. I saw this from a mile away and it's kind of sad that now we have public evidence of this. Kanye is a very influential figure, so I know for a fact that there was an agenda in the Kingdom of Darkness to come up with a very sinister and genius plot on getting Kanye to fall away from the faith because just his proclamation of Jesus alone was probably impacting many souls for the Kingdom of God. But we visibly started to see Kanye's falling away from the faith when he was posting these bizarre Instagram photos of his naked wife that he married only a few weeks after dating. I remember I went to go on his profile to see how he was doing and all of a sudden it was like I was on Cornhub or something. I'm like, bruh, how many times are you gonna post your wife naked? However, now he's publicly confessed that he has issues with Jesus as well as Christianity. Let's take a look at this interview and I'm gonna share my input on his commentary about the faith. Music is like life, you know what I'm saying? And life, you're kinda, you're, you're kinda like this, you know what I'm saying? And some people try to put you into a yesterday mode. You know, at one point, yay, we hear, and this is all you, we hear, you know, Jesus is king, we hear this, but that's all you. Then there's sometimes you just want to say, man, not f it, but you just want to say, man, this is what I'm feeling right now. Are you in that space where you're comfortable enough to say, this is where I am right now. I'm still a man of God. I'm, Jesus still is king, but this is vultures right now. This is where I am. It is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I ain't see Jesus show up, so. Bruh, how you gonna have beef with Jesus? I feel like Kanye is trying to climb up the ladder with how many people he could have beef with, and my man's done climbed all the way to the top. He's now having beef with the creator of the universe himself. <laughs> like, this is crazy, bruh. Having beef with Jesus is crazy. Anyways, let's continue. So, I had to put my, uh, my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with 
in my own hands. This is the problem with this type of thinking. You're in a demonic industry that goes against God's principles. So why are you expecting God to bless you in an industry that hates him? I'm not being religious and saying that God can't use people in dark places, but the reality is once you get saved, you are not to commune with people in darkness and expect God to bless you. That's not how it works. The revelation that Kanye didn't catch is when you get born again, you're supposed to consecrate with Jesus and leave the abode that you used to sin around. And I believe that maybe Kanye got saved and he was on fire for God, but he still remained in the industry. He was still around demonic people who had demons that wanted to suck him back into his old lifestyle, which ended up happening. And obviously the enemy put a lot of pressure on him because Kanye is very influential. So he didn't catch the revelation that he really just needed to dip where he was at. And now he's brought back to the same place because when you're in the matrix, it's almost like quicksand. Once you get saved, you have to escape the quicksand. If you stay in the sand, it's gonna suck you back in. And that's what we're seeing now. In our society and America, you know, People, Christians, we depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that really that I don't rock with is like, it's just always like, I'm going to pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something yourself too, more than just pray. And we're so in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen. But we ain't, we ain't praying our way out of prison. Mm -hmm. We ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics. We ain't praying our way to get our land back that was always ours after gentrification, after the Harlem uh, Renaissance and Black Wall Street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground. Them prayers ain't working. We're going we to have to apply actual physical building partnerships. Hands and, it, and it don't start unless we could really be real with each other and say, this is what I did, this is what I did. I don't fully disagree with this part, although I will say minimizing prayer, I definitely disagree with because I've seen the result of prayer in my life and it's gotten me out of terrible situations. But the part I agree with, with what he's saying here is this. There are a lot of Christians who have perverted what it means to wait on God when in reality, they're just being lazy. I wanna pull up this scripture in Proverbs 16, nine that the Lord gave me when I was meditating on this revelation. It says, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Notice how before the Lord directs your steps, a plan has to be created from you first. If your plan is abiding in the will of God, then God will direct you to complete it. But waiting on God or just praying for somebody without any action is not really productive. Prayer is very important, but you should have a game plan attached to that prayer. When kings in the Bible went to war, they had a game plan, but they still trusted in the Lord to be the one to bring them to triumph. But these kings weren't going out to the battlefield with without an army, without armor. That would be dumb and equivalent to the modern day waiting on God when you're not really doing anything proactive while you're waiting on God. So that part where he's talking about where Christians will just say, I'm gonna pray for you, but they're not really doing any actions to help you. I do kind of agree with that. Look at this. I know I'm not gonna third rail your interview, but look at the power of what happened when me and Kyrie was on the same page. See, that's what's scary. But what they do is they put us each in a silo and say your grandmother going to lose her crib and this going to, you know how many threats we've been dealt, dealt with? And I didn't pray my way through them threats either. I had to get up and do it myself. I had so much to do. I ain't had time to pray. So you're going to tell me that prayer is not effective, but then you didn't have time to pray. So how did you know if the prayer was effective or not? You see, there's no logic in this right here. The reality is Kanye didn't want to wait on God and he wanted to be his own God because he wasn't getting instant results. God is not a God of instant results. If you want fast results, you may as well go to witchcraft. In the kingdom, it's different. There's refining and testing. Faith is the currency of the kingdom and true faith cannot be brought forth if you're getting instantaneous results and that's not allowing you to deny yourself. Check the scripture in Isaiah 40, 31. It says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. True faith is putting your trust in the word of God, just like this Bible verse in Isaiah, even though the results are not visible yet. God will bring what you are praying for to come to pass if you already believe in the spirit that it's done and you stand on his word. But if you're not standing on his word and you're praying and you're like, bro, why isn't it happening yet? Oh my gosh, I'm not seeing the results. That's not faith. You're still doubting and that doesn't move God at all. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. True faith is believing that it's done in the spirit, even though you can't see it in the natural realm yet, because there's a delay in the spirit with the natural realm. You got to believe that. 
and God will bring it to come to pass. Faith actually produces tangible results, even if it's not right away like you want. In this next clip, Kanye talks about how he's surprised that he's still alive after exposing the financial corruption in the music industry. But what he says after is crazy. And this sealed the deal that he really did fall away from the faith. So I'll be surprised that I'm still alive <laughs> every day. How did you not so-called disappear? <laughs> like, cause that's a hell of a fight. Cause you know, cause I'm God. And anyone who disagree, I'm the God of me. And you can't tell me who I am. I can't tell y'all. I could tell y'all. It's y'all job to listen. Bruh, you basically just said it. You are your own God. Sadly, this is exactly where Satan wanted him to end up. The devil is really good at getting people to fall back into their old behavior. And the way he'll do this is he'll send demons called familiar spirits to charge up your flesh and to get you to slip back in your old lifestyle. Because this is the same thing that Kanye was on about over 10 years ago, talking about how he's a God. Everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was. A God. I just told you. That's who I think I am. I mean, he said this word for word, and the enemy completely deceived him into having this satanic mindset again. If you're God, I want you to be able to stay up for 24 hours without needing any rest. Actually, stay up for 72 hours. You can't, because your body is limited. If you stay up for 72 hours, you're gonna start hallucinating and demons are gonna start talking to you straight up. We are not God, we are limited. God has limited us for a reason, to show us that he is all powerful. Humans like to think that they're their own gods. You are not your own god. There is a god out there, and whether you like it or not, he is more sovereign than you, period. I'm standing on business. <laughs> I'm the god of me. I don't know if I'm in heaven already. And you know, it's another thing I don't like in Christianity, the fear of God. If God is love, why should you fear him? Because you place one fear, you get another fear, you get another fear, what do you have at that point? You're easily controllable. The fear of God is disturbing to those who want to be their own God. Because deep down, they know that they're powerless against a force that is greater than them. No matter how much they sear their conscience, they know that deep down. This mindset is what I call fake woke spirituality because people are acting like God is some sort of mechanism or idea for control rather than an all-powerful existing being that has clearly made himself known through his creation. And the thing with the whole fear concept is people tend to categorize fear in one section only. But fear is a little little more complex than you think. There's something called demonic fear and there's something called healthy natural instinctive fear. We know that the enemy uses fear a lot but there is also a fear that is holy in a sense and a fear that protects you from harm. Here's what a healthy fear looks like. Let's say there's a fire pit and you're putting your hand closer to the fire out of curiosity but all of a sudden it starts to get hot and a little bit painful. The natural fear instinct in you is gonna jerk your hand back, right? It's also similar with being on the edge of a cliff. Let's say you're walking on a trail, right? And you get to the very edge of a cliff and you look down at the cliff and it's 100 feet deep. The natural fearful instinct in you is gonna gravitate away from that cliff. Can you use that argument saying, oh, you're just easily controlled because you're off the edge of the cliff and you don't wanna fall and die? No, that doesn't work. That logic doesn't apply there because that's a natural, healthy, instinctive fear. It's the same thing with disobedience against God. Yes, God is love. I'm all about that. I love my heavenly father and his love is what brought me to repentance. But his love can only be understood in the deepest way possible when you also know the wrath that he spared you from, which is eternity in hell by offering his precious son, his perfect holy son, Jesus Christ, to take the punishment that we deserve. But the prideful, sinful nature of man cannot understand this revelation because man doesn't think that they're flawed. But if man isn't flawed, why do we hear the saying that nobody's perfect? Because man is flawed. That's just a fact. You can't make this stuff up. Everybody's been hurt by another human being. What's the moral of the story here? Why did I cover this video? This is the consequence of falling away. And this is the scary part about falling away. When you fall away from the faith, your heart really becomes hardened in a way that it was not hardened towards God before. Because now, different demons have been assigned to you and they have legal right to enter you due to your rebellion against God. And these spirits are gonna work overtime to keep you in bondage more so than you were before when you didn't come to the revelation that Jesus is Lord. This is the scary part about falling away. The heart gets hardened so much more. And it's so sad because I know the Heavenly Father's heart grieves for Kanye. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you're gonna pray for Kanye, please comment below praying for Kanye because at the end of the day, making a reaction video does nothing. If we're not gonna do something positive for Kanye's soul because every soul is valuable and prayer is effective. If you want to financially sow into this ministry, you can do so by clicking the offering link in the description or you can buy my merch that I dropped, which is also linked in the description. I'll see you guys soon for another video. God bless all of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take care and peace out. Ain't a game,
Jesus who I claim Yeah he reigns Cross up on my chain Brand new lane Heaven my domain The world I gain But it ain't do a thing